Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and I am excited to bring you another author interview today. This time it is with author Melissa Scholes Young, who has written her first novel called Flood. It's a really interesting novel about going home again. It takes place in the hometown of Samuel Clemens, maybe better known as Mark Twain, and that town is Hannibal, Missouri. So there's a lot of history and a lot of interesting facts and um, some of the mythology and some of the legends surrounding Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, and how that has affected Hannibal as a town. The author grew up in Hannibal, so she definitely knows what it is like to grow up in a town where uh, someone famous also grew up and how you kind of take those things for granted. So I want to read you the description of the book first. And this is from the Amazon description, and it says, It's a sparkling debut set in Mark Twain's boyhood town. Flood is a story of what it means to be lost and found. Laura Brooks fled her hometown of Hannibal, Missouri, 10 years ago, after a historic flood and personal heartbreak. Now she's returned unannounced, and her family and friends don't know what to make of it. She says she's just home for a brief visit and her high school reunion, but she's carrying too much luggage for that, literal and metaphorical. Soon Laura is embroiled in small-town affairs, the contentious divorce of her rowdy best friend Rose, the campaign of her 12-year-old godson Bobby to become the town's official Tom Sawyer, and the renewed interest of the man Laura once thought she'd marry, Sammy McGuire. Leaving town when she was 18 had been Laura's only option. She feared a stifling existence in a town ruled by its past, its mythological devotion to Mark Twain, and the economic and racial divide that run as deep as the Mississippi River. She can't forget that fateful 4th of July when the levees broke or the decisions that still haunt her. Now, as the Mississippi rises again, a deep wound threatens to reopen, and Laura must decide if running away once more might be the best way to save herself. So again, that is the Amazon description, and it gives you a good idea of what this novel is about. It's a really beautiful story of leaving your hometown and thinking you want something else, And not um, wanting to necessarily go home again, but uh, as the author says in the upcoming interview, kind of having to go home again. And what does that look like? And what does that mean? And how do those relationships change in the 10 years that, that the main character, Laura, has been gone? So it's this fascinating look at not only small town life and the small town that is also the hometown of Mark Twain and how that influences life there in Hannibal, but also the just the the dynamics of relationships and how relationships both change and stay the same with those people that you've known your whole life. Those people who know you maybe even better than you know yourself, your family and your closest friends. It's not always easy. Those relationships can be very complicated. And we see a lot of that in this novel. So it's, as I said, it's a really fascinating, beautiful read of relationships and history and mythology of, you know, this, this famous literary figure as both the real persona of Samuel Clemens as well as the his literary persona of Mark Twain. I found that uh, very fascinating because I'm familiar with the Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn story, but this made me realize that I don't know as much about Samuel Clemens as I thought maybe I did, and I definitely don't remember the Tom, Stor- Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn stories as well as I could. So it really made me want to... A, go to Hannibal, Missouri and learn more about Samuel Clemens and B, reread Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn and maybe some of um, Mark Twain's other 
works. So it's fascinating on multiple levels because you get the novel, you get a little bit of the relationships and those and how those change and alter. There's um, a little bit of romance in the story. There's some, you know, there's, as any good novel, there's tension, there's things that need to be overcome, but there's also historical elements. And it's just a really well written and interesting novel. So that is enough out of me. I'm going to turn now to my interview with Melissa Scholes Young, author of Flood. She was kind enough to speak with me this morning from her home in Washington, D.C. via Skype. So here is the interview. Good morning, Melissa. How are you? Good morning, Sarah. I'm well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. So as we get started, I would love for my listeners just to get to know you a little bit. So um, whatever you would like to share with us, that would be great. Okay. So um, I was uh, born and raised in Hannibal, Missouri, which is the setting of my novel, Flood. Um, I'm the first in my family to graduate college, like many um, like many people from small towns that, uh, that choose to make their lives other places. Um, I've moved a lot since I left Hannibal when I was 17. I now live in Washington, D.C., um, and I teach college writing and creative writing at American University. Okay, thank you. Let's talk a little bit about your writing. When did you begin writing? Is it something that you've always wanted to do, or did you start later in life? Mm, that's a great question. I think I've always been writing. I know I've always been a storyteller. Um, so I, uh, my family might say that I've always been a bit of a, a truth stretcher, as they called it, but I've, I've always been making up stories. Um, I, I won a writing contest in third grade at, for the Hannibal Courier Post, my hometown newspaper. And that gave me much too much encouragement to keep writing. Um, but I, I didn't really start writing fiction until much later in life. Um, and I didn't do, I did an MFA when I was in my mid thirties after teaching high school for a decade. So I think I've always been a writer, but to actually start publishing my work and really becoming trained um, in how to write better took a lot, it was a longer path for me. I'm a bit of a late bloomer. And your 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 novel just came out, right? Was it June twenty seventh? Was that the release date? Yeah. So, what have you been doing um, since then? To have you been you've been promoting it, right? I have been having one long book party. Um, it has been an absolute blast. Um, I decided I wanted to launch it in back in the Midwest where it's set, where my home is. Um, so my so I went on a book a big book tour. 11, I just got back from 11 days on the road. I started in St. Louis. Uh, I was in Chicago. I was in Carbondale, Illinois, where I went to graduate school at SIU. And then, of course, I was back in Hannibal for two different launch parties, um, one at the Arts Council and one at the Mark Twain Museum. So it was a real homecoming, and it was pretty much an 11-day uh childhood love fest. It was really, really fun to see everybody again and celebrate. I'm really glad I went back to the Midwest. I'm back on the East Coast now. And so this Saturday, we have a DC launch at Politics and Prose. Um, and then I'm up and down the East Coast. I'll go up to the um, the Mark Twain Museum up in Hartford as well and uh, and just really keep celebrating. It's been a lot of fun. I would write, it sounds a, like I would write a book again just to be able to have this much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really fun. Maybe maybe a little tiring, but fun at the same time. I think it's a really good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So your, your family is still in Hannibal? My family is still in Hannibal. All my aunts and uncles, 27 first cousins, my brothers oh, wow. in Missouri, everyone's still there. So it's a great place to be from and a great place to go home to. Which brings us to your book, Flood. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, so Flood is the story that Mark Twain would have written if Becky Thatcher had gone back to Hannibal for her high school reunion and, and really found Tom Sawyer. Um, it's, it's not, I wasn't as interested in can you go home again, because I think we know you really can't, but I was much more interested in the story of what happens if you have to, because home has to take you back. Your people have to claim you. That's, that's, those are just the rules. And so... I was more interested in um, Laura Brooks, the main character's recalibration, this idea that she had to go backwards in order to move forward. And what happens if home doesn't, you know, they take you back, but it's not all that soft of a place to land. Um, and, and what happens when you have to revisit all the stories that you've been telling yourself about who you are? And what happens if some of them aren't actually true? So that's part of what Laura Brooks has to do through this story. 
and it, yeah, it's really interesting because she does go home and she, her family is there. Some of they they all receive her with different levels of enthusiasm. <laughs> um, and it's also interesting because how how large is Hannibal in terms of population? Eighteen thousand eight hundred eleven. Okay. <laughs> That was very specific. 18,810 now because I'm gone. <laughs> okay. So it's it's a town on the smaller side. And, you know, there were there, there are things that people from a small town will recognize. Like um, you can't go to Walmart without running into half the population. Mm-hmm. As, as I, it's true. You have a basically a class reunion in the parking lot of every Walmart. Um, actually, there is only one Walmart, um, which makes it very convenient. You can't avoid anyone. And uh, everyone thinks they know who you are. As usual, I have to jump in and interrupt the interview for our first break of the podcast. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back with my interview with author Melissa Scholes Young. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. We are talking today with author Melissa Scholes Young about her debut novel, Flood. And without further ado, I'd like to get right back to that interview. Okay, so you grew up in Hannibal. Uh, what other elements of the story, if any, are autobiographical? Um, so not not very many. I've never moved home again. And so it's true that I grew up in Hannibal. I understand the mythology of Mark Twain. I understand the setting of Hannibal. And I understand what it's like to have a place like that to have roots that you grow from. But I never went back again. So I was interested in that story. The other part of it that I'm very familiar with is the flood of 1993. Because I was there. I was a high school senior the year that that flood devastated everything up and down the Mississippi. It was it was considered a, a 500 year flood and it was absolutely devastating. And so this idea of water and what it means to grow up right next to a body of water that's just always trying to take over your banks, um, that, that was something I was very interested in and that I'm very familiar with. We flood every year, but normally not quite the way we did in 93. Almost as though the the river is and the flooding is an is a separate character in the book because it has such a huge role in the story. I want it to be. I'm glad you noticed that. I think that um, any place, anybody who grows up on water understands that it is both your lifeblood and always threatening you. Um, and, and that we sometimes think, especially with the levee systems, that we can redirect it. We can control Mother Nature. But um, she shows us every time we can't. <laughs> So the book is set in 2003. I'm assuming that that's because uh, you wanted to kind of focus on that flood of 93 in um, Laura's senior year, kind of like yours. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then she comes home for her 10th year reunion. Mm -hmm. Right. And I wanted, I thought 10 years was enough time to have what all that angst that we have about going home. And I, I was fascinated. I was actually writing this story when I was going home for my 20 year reunion. And I could not believe how much fun it was and how much angst I had beforehand. So I was also fascinated. Um, the reunion scene in Flood was one of the first scenes that I wrote because I was, I thought it was so funny how um, uncomfortable I was to go home to people that welcomed me back happily. And yet uh, I understood that we all get that envelope for our, our high school reunions and there's something it does to us that tells us. Uh, that, that makes us reflect, I think, on why we left, where we've been since, why we stayed. Um, I'm, I'm, I was interested in that story. So, yes, I needed a decade between the flood of 93 and then Laura coming home again. And the reunion scene is um, 
quite interesting. <laughs> I don't want to give anything away, but it's hilarious. So I love, I love but, a good cat fight. Uh, <laughs> it was, that didn't happen to you at your reunion today. <laughs> it did not. It was much tamer and um, really, really fun. But I wanted so much to show this female friendship between Rose and Laura. Actually, their story was the very first one that I wrote between. I really wanted it to be a, a female Tom and Huck. Right? We're all mm -hmm. familiar with the way that Tom and Huck are good for each other and bad for each other. But I'm also interested in the ways that with friendships, especially friendships we've had since we were very, very young, we just can't quit. And it, mm -hmm. it seems like we outgrow them sometimes, but yet when I'm back home with people who have known me that long, they sometimes know me better than I know myself. So that reunion scene is meant to also show the way that Rose and Laura's friendship is um, is just going to last no matter what, uh, that their loyalty to each other runs deeper than anything else. And I love Laura's relationship with Bobby also. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really sweet. Mm hmm I think it's one of the things that could tether Laura back to the town. And one of the things she struggles with is how do you maintain those ties when you choose to leave, when you are so far away? Um, and she really, really wants, she also, I think it's interesting because she thinks that Bobby needs to leave in order to succeed. And of course, I don't. I think that it's complicated with your hometown, but I think that people who choose to stay really choose to dig in. They choose to invest in their hometown and their communities. So I don't think there's a right or a wrong um, but I think Laura, at the beginning of the story, thinks that the decision is really, really clean, and it's not. So it's set in Hannibal, um, which is the boyhood home of Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens. So he becomes kind of a, a character as well, or at least the mythology becomes a character. But you do something interesting in the book in that between chapters, you have a little bit of that of that legend, of that mythology, of that history. Um, talk a little bit about that process and why you decided to include those specific parts in the book. Mm -hmm. So the research part of it is always the best way to avoid writing. <laughs> and I, I enjoyed it so much. Um, and I, I was surprised by once I left Hannibal, how much more I learned about Hannibal. And we grow up walking the streets where Samuel Clemens grew up. And yet I was more, I was interested in, in, in rereading the books, rereading the history, but I had to figure out a way for the reader to get into that story as well. So I, Laura's high school teacher, Miss B, is really the one who writes this kind of book within a book. And it's meant as a handbook for the Tom and Becky contest, which is very, very real. I was just home for 4th of July. We just crowned our new Tom and Becky. We're very excited. And I was, I, I wanted to be able to share that information with the reader. And so Laura's trying to educate Bobby as a contestant, and Miss B is also trying to educate Laura about her town. And I think it takes a bit of an outsider like Miss B to tell the insiders that, that grew up in Hannibal their own history. Um, so each of those passages is meant to give the reader a little history, but also set the scene for where the story is going to take place. So I'm hoping they also contribute to setting. Yeah, it takes, I think we take our, our hometowns for granted just because we grow up there and we don't really pay them that much attention. You know, I grew up two hours from Glacier Park and people are always fascinated by that. And I'm like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you know, we, my parents used to drag us there every year. Right. We don't. And I, I drag my kids um, whenever we go back to Hannibal down to all that. Now that they're older, though, they actually are very interested. This last trip, they wanted to go to the caves and they wanted to see the, the museum again and they wanted to, the, the river wasn't up enough so there wasn't a lot of flooding this year so it was delightful to walk down to the river um, be able to roll down the banks just like Samuel Clemens did and and it is it's a history I think we almost have to see from a from an outside perspective in order to appreciate when I travel and tell people I'm from Hannibal it everyone knows Hannibal everyone knows Mark Twain all around the world people know it so it's a great place to be from the, the in between the chapters really and and the book itself but the parts in between the chapters from Miss B's book really did make me want to go to Hannibal I've never been there um it sounds really interesting and fun and a little quaint and kitschy you know which is just perfect it is it is delightful um really really good people and you should visit it would be a lot of fun to uh, especially come back fourth July but you can't go wrong and uh, you can spend days going through the history and the history is changing a lot of the town um, two years ago, Jim's Journey, uh, which is called the Huck Finn Freedom Center, opened. And really, Hannibal, I think, is is beginning to be brave enough to wrestle with a more complete history 
Um, and I'm hoping I'm hoping more towns do that too. I think that there's more stories to tell. That's great because, as I said, the book is set in 2003, so that hasn't really happened in the book yet. Yeah, they're still struggling and still, I would say, um, erasing um, mm -hmm. a lot of the history of Jim in the town. And I, I grew up not wanting to be Becky, um, really feeling much more like a Huck. And we in Hannibal tell the Tom and Becky story because it's a family story, right? It's much more digestible. But I've always loved Huckleberry Finn more. And I always loved his friendship with Jim. And I, I loved that Huck in some ways was, was more complicated because he was moral and didn't, um, didn't agree with what society told him. Um, and, and Jim just didn't have the same choices. And so I was always fascinated with, with the, the, the social criticism that Samuel Clemens wrote as well. I'm going to jump in here one more time. We're going to take our second and final break of the podcast. And when we come back, we'll be speaking more with author Melissa Scholes Young about this social commentary of Samuel Clemens and how things have changed in Hannibal and elsewhere. So stay tuned and we will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about the Tom and Becky characters of Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain's novels, and how those characters still play such a big role in Hannibal's life today, how there are young people who are um, chosen to play those roles each year. But there are other parts of the story that don't get as much attention, especially at the time that this novel is set in 2003 and those things are changing. So let's get back to the interview and find out more about that. And I did find it interesting that they do have the Tom and Becky characters, you know, that the, that the children of a certain age try out for and go through this whole process, but there's no Huck Finn wandering around during those days. And obviously there's no Jim at that point. And, mm -hmm. um, now, so, and, and the, it, it, it's a very, um, it's a it's a contest that requires a lot of parental involvement and it requires a lot of um, investment. The costumes are are quite laborious to make, um, quite expensive. And so there's there's certainly a lot of support that you have to have in order to be able to succeed at a contest like that. So anything else that you would like to tell us about this story? Um... Oh, that's a great question. There's everything. I want to tell you everything about this story. I want everyone to read Flood. Um, I, one of the the. For me, in the writing of it, one of the most interesting parts was learning about the Mississippi River actually running backwards. I had always heard of this mystery in, when you grow up there, but I had never actually knew that it was true. Um, and this was, for me, in the research process, when I figured out how to interweave all the threads, was when I learned that in 1812, the series of um, earthquakes along the New Madrid fault line made the Mississippi actually roar up and run backwards for a few hours which is terrifying when you grow up on a river like the Mississippi to imagine Earth re, you know, really trying to recalibrate, retake itself. So when I read that, I understood that <clears throat> that needed to parallel Laura's story about running backwards and that type of recalibration, but also about Samuel Clemens's story about leaving. He said that he couldn't really write about Hannibal until he had enough, a safe enough distance from it. Uh, to to be able to reflect on it. So once I realized all three of those threads were parallel, um, that's when I think the real writing of Flood started. And Samuel Clemens didn't go back to Hannibal, is that correct? No. He visited, but he made his home eventually in Hartford, 
Um, but he went away, even in Hartford, he went away to Elmira, New York, 22 summers in a row. And that's where he did his real writing. So there was always a retreat process. And there was always the the public Mark Twain that was an author in, in, versus the, the private Samuel Clemens that was a, a husband, a father, and a writer. So he was always, I think, um, in a very modern day way, balancing what it means to be a public figure and what it means to be a private writer. And I know this one just came out, so this might be a precipitous question, but what's next? Are you working on anything right now? I am. That, that's a great question. The, the best advice I got when um, when Flood was accepted for publication was my writer friend said, just start writing something else. There's there's time and you'll want to have something um, under your belt started so you remember you are a writer and not um, just a writer in the world. And so I don't know if I have another Hannibal book in me. Um, we'll find out. But right now I'm working on another book that's set in rural Ohio. This one it's called Bug Girl. And it's about a, a rural, it's four sisters in a rural family pest control business. And they have to figure out secession. And um, it's really little women with bugs. <laughs> I want to read it now just because of that sentence. <laughs> With a little bit of um, uh, uh, prepper. Do you know the prepper communities? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, with a little bit of prepper involved too. Because oh, that's really fascinating research to, to figure out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. Uh, do you think you would ever go back to, um, you said you don't have a Hannibal story in you right now. Do you think you'd ever go back to Hannibal? Or do you think you'd ever go back to any of these characters? Mm -hmm. I don't. That's a great question. Um, Rose was one of my favorite characters to write. Uh, I think there's more Rose in the story because she still she hasn't changed as much by the end. Uh, I feel by the end of the story, you really understand Laura's trajectory. Uh, but I don't know that Rose has yet figured out her own. Bobby is an interesting character to me as well. Um, I could see under, from his perspective, because he actually doesn't want to leave Hannibal. He loves his hometown very much. He's actually, I think, the most redeemable character in the book. And yet he's a 12-year-old boy. He's, you know, he's Tom Sawyer. So I would be more interested in his story as well. But I think that uh, right now I'm not writing it. <laughs> not yet. Let's um, talk about your writing process. Do you have a favorite place to write? Do you keep a schedule? Um, so anywhere and everywhere I'm writing, my family would tell you, um, I'm always taking down stories. They say that you can sort of see a glaze in my eyes when I'm sort of listening, but I'm actually making something up in my head. Usually it's a character detail. I will notice something and, and then I start investigating it in a, a perhaps creepy way. Um, but I have to know more about it and I'll start in, interrogating, but I, I really just want to know people's stories. I find characters fascinating. So I write every day. I write 500 words. That's it. And they can be 500 words on anything. I wrote an entire draft of Flood that way summers ago um, just by saying 500 words because writing a novel is completely insurmountable. But writing 500 words, you can do that. And sometimes I have my 500 words done by noon and sometimes I don't have them done until midnight. <laughs> but I write 500 words a day. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on a novel. Sometimes I'm just writing in a journal, but it's still 500 words. I tend to write in my home office um, but I also am a bit of a binge writer. I'll go away to a residency and I'll write 5,000 words in a week um, if I can get the time. So I like to, especially when I'm working on a bigger story like Flood, I like to have the time to hold the whole novel, which is a, a real luxury. <laughs> what do your children think? Are they excited about the novel? Are they kind of indifferent? They love it. Um, my, It's been funny. My oldest daughter, my teenage daughter, actually went on the book tour with me. And we had a blast. I would write another book just to be able to spend that time with her, to take her on book tour with me. They, she was very, very gracious. She was very helpful. Unfortunately, she kept getting called Mini M Missy um, in my oh, hometown. No. I know. Um, but I, I guess there are worse problems to have. <laughs> my 10-year-old yeah. uh, uh, daughter actually loves this book, has probably now read it 10 times. And oh, wow. she actually is the one that I'm catching all the time on my computer writing. She wants to read what I'm working on next. And and she'll give me a lot of feedback on it. Um, and she helps me make decisions. Uh, so she's actually a big, she knows the book almost as well as I do at this point. I'll, sometimes And sometimes she knows the early draft. She'll correct me and say, I've noticed that you cut that thing in chapter four. <laughs> so she's a, she's a good critic. That's good. She may grow up to be an editor. Hey, boy, editors are uh, saints, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. 
in terms of reading, um, who do you, what's your favorite genre? Do you have favorite authors? I have so many favorite authors. Um, and usually the book I'm reading at the moment is the one I'm most in love with. Um, I love Bobby Ann Mason. I love rural stories. I love rural voices. I love um, Rebecca Berry. I fell in love with her work a few years ago. She has a short story collection called Later at the Bar that I read in a residency and I had to email her immediately and say, I am your new biggest fan. I love her voice of, again, writing rural communities. Um, there's two books I'm reading right now. One's by Bryn Chancellor called Sycamore and it's a bit of a mystery and it's a fascinating read, cannot put it down. And then on the plane, I read A Girl Walks Into a Book by Miranda Pennington. Um, and that one, it does very similar things that I do with Twain in that it in it's a memoir, but it inner it, it weaves in the Bronte sisters story. So I like books that do more complicated things like that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else uh, that you would like to, people to know about your book, about you as an author, about your upcoming events? Anything else you want to talk about? So I'm, w one of the ways that I didn't know Flood was going to be so relevant when I was writing it is really this rural and urban divide that seems to be creating so much polarization in our country. And so I was, I, I find that I'm answering that question a great deal about flood, um, about why that contrast seems so stark right now. And I'm worried about it um, because I've lived in rural communities and now I live in Washington, DC, and I don't see it as stark as people who don't have the same experiences. I can go back and forth easily and very comfortably between rural and urban. And uh, so I, I didn't realize flood was going to be so relevant, but it is. That's fascinating. Thank you. Um, you, you mentioned you have an event coming up on Saturday. Is that, and then do you, what else do you have? Uh, anything people might be able to attend? A lot of things that people can attend. The whole publicity list is up on my website at melissascholesyoung.com. Um, Saturday at Politics and Prose here in Washington, D.C. Uh, the following Friday, I'll be at One More Page out in Virginia. I'll be in New York City August 15th, um, and I'm actually reading with Miranda Pennington then uh, at Emma Straub's bookstore called Books Are Magic. Um, and I'm really all up and down the East Coast in Hartford, like I said, at the Mark Twain House. Um, pretty much if you'd like to come to a flood reading, you can probably find one pretty close to you. And if not, just let me know and I'll make one happen pretty close to you. Um, I love going to the readings. I love meeting readers. And I also love going to book clubs. They are the most fun because you get to sit and listen to really, really smart people just talk about your book. Um, and they usually feed you pretty well, too. <laughs> are, you, are you coming to the west coast at any point i am in the spring next year i'll be okay. in san francisco and then i'll be at the tucson book festival oh fun yeah. okay yeah, i'm very excited okay. Great. tell people where they can find you i mean you have a website mm -hmm. melissa skulls young uh social media can they find you on social media they can find me everywhere on social media i love twitter i love instagram um i'm on goodreads i'm everywhere you really can't avoid me <laughs> good to know all right that those were my questions um it was really really fun to talk to you this morning i appreciate uh, it's a little bit early but i appreciate you uh getting up and and chatting with me first thing thank you i appreciate you reading flood and 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 wanting to talk about it i'm grateful yeah i loved it it was great so um thank you for writing it thank you i think our hometowns are not as scary as we think they are we can go home again we can go home again. I have done it, and it's, it's the, the, a little awkward, but... Well, that's because we've changed. Yes, which, exactly. Which we blame on our town, That, uh, but the truth is I think it's a little awkward and uncomfortable because we, everyone expects everyone to be the same, and, and we've actually changed too much. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. Good luck with everything going forward, and good luck with the next novel. I'm excited. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So that was my interview with author Melissa Scholes Young, author of her debut novel, Flood. And one of these days, I'm going to find a way to exit my interviews more gracefully. I always come across as really awkward at the end. It's because I love talking to these authors so much. I love hearing their stories. I love hearing their processes. I just love hearing about their their writing and their lives and how those things intersect. And I could ask a million trillion more questions and be like, oh my gosh, I so resonate with that. Oh, I'm, 
I'm such a fangirl when I talk to these authors. I just want to ask them a million probably very silly, probably very stupid questions that would drive them crazy. But again, I want to thank my guest, author Melissa Scholes Young, for agreeing to be on the podcast today, for telling us about her debut novel, Flood. It really is a wonderful novel. I think you will enjoy it. Whether you are from a small town, you will enjoy that portion of it. Whether you are a fan of Mark Twain's writing, that's something that you will enjoy. Maybe you are a history buff, and so you'll enjoy maybe learning some new things about Hannibal, about the history of of that area of Missouri about Samuel Clemens and Mark Twain, or maybe you just really like a good story of family and friend relationships and the way we change throughout our lives, whether we're from a small town or not. I definitely recommend this book. I hope you'll read it and I know you'll enjoy it. So thank you again for joining me. I hope you'll join me again next week. I have another author interview with author Mitchell F. Jones. He is the author of two novels so far, two mysteries, uh, Murder in Old Maine and Dead Men Can't Murder. So we've got some mysteries next week to talk about. As always, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can follow us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. And you can download these podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, and any of the apps that you use for your mobile devices. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. Please join me again next week for another author interview. And in the meantime, go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.